Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're gonna cover pretty much everything you need to know to get started with ZBrush. It's gonna be a fairly, fairly long video compared to normal stuff. And at the end of it, you should have all the tools required to make something like these sculpts here. Uh, in order to in order to sculpt in, in ZBrush, you don't actually require a lot of tools per se. You just have to learn how to use a few tools pretty well. So we're going to cover everything in terms of um, Dynamesh, the general brushes, and the general sculpting workflow. The mo one of the most confusing things is going to be the UI. It yeah. is quite confusing just straight out, out of the bat. Um, you're just going to kind of have to get used to it. Yeah. We're going to cover the most basic things you, you will need to, you know, to get you through the, the first couple of weeks of ZBrush. But these are pretty much all the tools that we use ourselves. Yeah. So this is what you're going to see the first time you open up ZBrush. We are running ZBrush 4R8P2. <laughs> Not a whole lot has really changed in the last version of ZBrush. So if you're watching some general tutorials online and they're a few years old, they're most likely still going to be relevant. So whenever you start in ZBrush for the first time, this is confusing because if you start to sculpt here, uh, also let's just note that we're using a tablet, you will get these weird things going here. <laughs> and you might try a couple of the different brushes or just general things here, but you can tell this is not sculpting. Yeah, this so is like, something went wrong. Yeah, something went wrong here. This is two, what they call 2.5D, and, and this is pretty much the last time we'll mention 2.5D. This is not relevant for us. What you need to know is how do you actually get started with 3D. So the very first thing we're going to do is hit the Control N key, Control N for new, uh, for clear the canvas. Just make a new canvas here. And then let's go over to our um, tool palette here. So this is the very first thing we're going to cover. We just have to know how to get some geometry going out here. Uh, essentially, they call a 3D model a tool. So we can go uh, click on this one, the tool, and then we can go to Sphere 3D. And if you just drag this out, you can now see that you have indeed a 3D model. And if you drag it out again, <laughs> you have uh, the same 3D model everywhere. There are going to be a lot of hurdles like this in ZBrush where yeah. something that might seem logical in real life <laughs> isn't in ZBrush. Yeah. So this is cool. You know, you, can, this, you can't really do this in the 3D software, but it's not useful in any way, shape, or form. So again, let's clear the canvas, Control N, and let's drag out one, another, another sphere of these. So up here, you can see we have the edit mode. Edit mode now allows you to go into into this into the 3D mode, if you wish. So now this is in 3D. So if you try to drag out another one now, if you just hit one of the corners here, you can see that this is now in 3D. So the very first thing we're going to talk about here is pretty much the navigation. Uh, right now you can see by just uh, by dragging around here on a canvas, we're just rotating it. There are several ways of rotating it. The way I prefer to rotate is by holding down a right mouse button and just rotating it around here. It if might you, be a little tricky to see with a sphere, but yes. it is actually rotating. It is actually <laughs> rotating. The way we scale it is, this is this gets a bit tricky. You hold down the Alt key and then the right mouse button key. So this will pan it around. But the way we scale it is to release the Alt mouse button. So Alt, right mouse button, and then release the Alt mouse button. <laughs> gets a bit tricky. You just have to learn this. And then here as well, we also have, like we said, Alt, right mouse button is just padding it. You can also use these guys. This might be easier in the beginning, but I highly recommend actually learning to navigate this. It becomes second nature fairly quickly. OK, so the very first thing we've got to cover here is how do you save something? In most 3D software, on most software, this is not really something you have to really think about. <laughs> ZBrush, however, is a bit special. And that's something you're going to see throughout this video. So there are a couple of ways to save your scene, document, tool, whatever you want to call it. So the most logical way would be to go in a document and save as. We're not going to do this. This will save a snapshot of the 2D image here. So it's just an image. It's just an image. If you go to document, save as, you can't use this for anything. What we will do, though, in just really quickly in this document menu here, we're just going to change the remove the gradient here. So uh, I mean, this is just really a personal preference for us. Yeah. But I think, yeah, most people like it just better. looks a bit nicer yeah so the way you do this you just go to document and just range all the way down to zero uh, this is purely personal preferences but we're just going to do that so 
essentially you have three ways of saving. You have as a document, which you never do, never, ever, <laughs> ever do this, no <laughs> argument. And then we have yeah, as, as a file. This is what happens when you hit Control S. Control S is just save most default things in most software. So you have file, save as. And then we have saving as a tool. So saving as a project is probably going to be the easiest for now. Saving as a project is has more features. It stores your position. Let's say you put this up here and you put a material on it and whatnot. This is going to save. This is going to save the position and all that. And it's also going to save all these other ones here as well. Uh, the current state of the project. If you save it as a tool, which is going, if this should be here by default, uh, you just go to tool, save as. This is cleaner, but it's it requires a bit more setup. So in the beginning, feel free to just save as a project. So with that out of the way, let's cover some uh, some of the basic basic interface. This is this is where you're going to be living in ZBrush. It's very different from other other three D software, so it takes some time getting used. So this is one of the biggest hurdles people have when getting into ZBrush. And also coming back to ZBrush, if you stop using ZBrush for maybe a couple months or so, you come back into ZBrush, it can yeah. sometimes be a little bit tricky to pick it back up. Yeah. So you're not going to use a whole lot of this, to be perfectly honest. We're mostly going to be living under the tool palette here, which is docked by default. You're going to be using most of these menus here. Uh, over here, this is where you'll, you, you'll, you can find something like brushes. You can find some alphas. Um, you Up here, we have the edit mode. We have draw, move, tool, uh, scale. So this is where you can, we, we will cover these more later on. But um, we will be using these features a fair bit. Uh, we have, uh, you can change your brush size and your brush intensity uh, over here. So this is the draw size and this is your intensity. If you the higher brush size, the stronger it is, or the bigger it is, the higher is the intensity, the, the stronger it's going to be. You can also see your active points here. The higher number, the heavier it's going to be, but also the more resolution you can get. So with this said, let's just get started with some very basic sculpting. And you can see by default, the standard brush is enabled. And if you start to sculpt now, you're going to see this message here. Again, ZBrush to the rescue. Yes. You thought it was going to be easy. It's not. <laughs> so what this is, is telling you, essentially, you have to click this button here. So ZBrush by default comes with these standard primitives. And the standard primitives you can manipulate in a different way than you would a standard 3D object. We're primarily just going to be focused on the standard 3D objects. And that's yeah. what Polymesh 3D makes them. Yeah. All this said, click this button here. Yeah. And now you see PM3D, which just means Polymesh 3D. So now we can start to sculpt on this guy here. So if you just if you just uh, hit the left mouse button or just sculpt with a pen, it's just going, you're just going to be able to, to move out. You're just going to move the geometry out here. If you want to move it in, you just hold on the Alt key. This can also be done through the UI. If you go up to, you see there's uh, two buttons called Z add and Z sub. Yeah. I would recommend that you just stick with the Alt key. Alt yeah. basically just inverts whatever is selected for the brush, whether it's Z add or Z sub. Yeah. Once you hold down Alt, it'll switch the mode. Yeah. We also have the draw size up here, and we have the intensity. You don't really have to change intensity a whole lot, but the draw size you will have to do, uh, you will have to use. So you can see here, it says draw size and it says S. S means that this is the hot key for the draw size. So if you hit the S key now, you can just change the, bro the brush size like this. So let's just cover some of the basic, basic brushes we're going to be using here. You, you do this, you access this by going over here, top left, and you can see all of these. You can also access this by hitting the B key, which brings out the brushes. So most of these are not useful. <laughs> Let's just be clear. Here. You have a lot of weird brushes here. But the, the main ones we are going to be using will be something like clay buildup. You might use clay, you're definitely going to be using standard brushes. So this is even even for us, this is confusing. So we have a little cheat sheet here, where we have all the hotkeys. This is something I recommend just getting started with right away. I really think hotkeys is it's like it's the name of the game once you use, yeah. start using ZBrush, because going into menus constantly in and out different menus is just going to get super tiring. Yeah. So being familiar with the most basic hotkeys is going to be very useful. Yeah, absolutely. So the the 
the, the one you have we currently have selected is a standard brush. This is a fairly simple brush. It's not really doing anything super fancy. It's really useful. You're going to be using this a fair bit. So the hotkey here is B, so just to bring up the brushes, and then S and T for brush standard. But S for standard and T for T and standard? <laughs> yes. Something like that. And then you have the clay buildup. This is B, C, B. And you can see this is a lot coarser. This has like a nice little texture to it. This is the one I'm doing most of my sculpting with. Like the characters is on the beginning. They're sculpted like 95% just using this one here. Yeah, the nice thing about the clay buildup is that it, it constantly adds clay or yeah. it constantly adds volume. So if you just go over the same spot over and over and over again, it'll just either add or subtract to that area. Yeah. It's so, fantastic. Yeah, it's really it's really it's a very aggressive brush yeah. because there's no limit to it, so to speak. Yeah, you can very easily screw up your entire model. <laughs> uh, next one we're going to cover is uh, Dam Standard. This is amazing. This is B D S. This is um, this is C sub enabled by default, which means you're going to carve into it. This is used a lot for adding like wrinkles or general like sharp edges to your model. Yeah, and if you go the inverse of that, if you hold down Alt while you're using this, mm. you'll get the opposite result. This is really handy. Yeah. I, I use this a lot just for adding like sharp ridges to a model as well. And then we have the trim dynamic, B, T, D. So this one is for planes. This is fantastic as well. Particularly if you're doing anything hard surface or if you're doing rocks or something like that, this will just give you nice planes right away. Yeah, also, but even if you're doing something organic like a face, it's really easy to yeah. define like the planes of the, the nose, the cheekbones, yeah. things like that. Yeah, exactly. And then we have the move brush. This is B, N, V. And this does exactly that. <laughs> this just allows you to move big chunks of polygons around. And the last brush we have is the smooth brush. You access this by holding the shift key. And this is regardless of any brush. Yes. So let's say you're using the clay brush, um, a clay buildup, B, C, B. Now you can just start sculpting here. And if you want to smooth this out now, you don't have to change the brush. If you look over here now, if you hold on the shift key, it's just gonna give you the smooth brush right away. One feature uh, I think we should just quickly mention is within the draw size. If you see, there's a tiny little tag that says dynamic. Mm -hmm. So if you double click that, it'll turn off dynamic sizing of the brushes. Dynamic just basically keeps track of how close you are to the model or not. So it'll keep the same scale of the brush. Yeah. You can see now that it's off, you get like a smaller brush when we're closer, but with dynamic on, it stays consistent. Yeah, that's really useful. Mm. So you can see now that, yeah, we have all these nice little brushes here, but we are running out of resolution very quickly here. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> if only there was some way to fix this. <laughs> so the way you can see a wireframe here is, or just seeing the general topology, is by hitting the Shift F key, or you can click this button here. Shift F just allows you to see, yeah, see the wireframe here. And now you can just clearly see that if you're trying to sculpt in this area here, nothing is really going to happen because you have one polygon. There's so few points to yeah. move around now. Like for this, you have four points and you can't define anything. So if you want more resolution here now, you can go to geometry. This is again all under the tool palette, geometry and under, um, sorry, tool geometry and then you hit divide. This is something that we talked about this before recording the video. Morton has literally never touched this button. No, never. <laughs> I only use the hotkey. I yes. did. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's. It was just so. It, it seemed so pointless to go into the menu, yeah. and I just. It was just hotkey right away. Exactly. So if you hover over this, you can see that the hotkey is Control D. So if you just hit that, you can see now we get a lot more resolution here. Every time you hit this, the poly count increases by four times. So now, you, if you hit Shift F again, now we can see we have a lot more resolution here, which allows us to really go in and sculpt this. You can also change the subdivision level here. So if you if you want to go down again, you can just go here and just change this slider. I have really never really used this slider <laughs> because I use hotkeys for this. So the hotkey is Shift D to go down, and it's D to go up, and it's Control D to add another level. These are hotkeys you will be using constantly. Yeah. So you can currently see we have around 400, uh, 520,000 points. This is perfectly fine. In in ZBrush, you can work pretty pretty smoothly with it up to like around maybe 10 million polys or so. I, I wouldn't really go above 10 million for most things. 
Uh, but if if you're in a range of a few million polys, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. And because Seabrush runs on magic, it, it also <laughs> it also runs on fairly low level computers as well. Mm -hmm. I had a laptop for. 2004, like many years ago, and somehow was still able to sculpt on that. I think that's one of the things that actually makes Seabrush so accessible, mm. that it is hardware, it's pretty forgiving. Yeah, um, you don't need a $2,000 gaming, $2, gaming rig no. to be able to run anything here. So that is really useful. So let's say we sculpt some more stuff on this though, and uh, we're adding an abstract shape. Yeah, we're really getting to the point now where we're pushing the polygons to, yeah. to, the, to their max. So you can see here now that even with smooth this, you know, we still don't have a lot more resolution here. Yeah, sure, we could we could keep subdividing this, but but if we subdivide this region, everything else will also be subdivided. So if you want to just add more resolution than this guy, there is no point in subdividing the entire thing. So we have a feature called Dynamesh. Dynamesh is amazing. It just allows you to have a dynamic resolution. Uh, on or it just allows you to yeah get dynamic resolution on areas where you need resolution. Yeah, so it'll look at what requires the. Mo it'll have like a baseline resolution that it'll try to you know put across everything, yeah. and in the sort of deep crevices and peaks, it'll try to give you more resolution to preserve that detail. Yeah. So Dynamesh is found again under Tool, Geometry, and Dynamesh. If you hit the Dynamesh button now, you're gonna see that uh, if we ha you have subdivision levels, it will ask you. Do you, would you like to freeze the subdivision levels before entering Dynamesh mode? Don't worry too much about what this means. Just hit no. Yeah, <laughs> always hit no. Yeah, that's. We're not going to get too in, too much into technical details here. This is just a beginner's introduction. Now, one important thing that I think we should note about the Dynamesh tool is we have the resolution slider, and the resolution slider determines how many polygons we assign to your mesh, but this is also scale dependent. Yeah. So the bigger your object, it has you kind of have to work with the resolution and yeah. the scale of your object hand in hand. Yeah, exactly. So definitely keep that in mind. But for now, probably just mostly worry about resolution. Yeah. So if you, if we keep on sculpting now, and you, you, let's say you're adding, you're going to the move brush, B, M, V, and you want to add some kind of big thing here now. Before, and with just regular subdivision levels, you, um, you have to, like again, subdivide the entire thing. But with Dynamesh active, we can just hit Control and drag outside the model and just release. And then you can see that it dynamically gives us more resolution in this region here. Yeah, that's a nice thing about the polyframe. You can sort of visualize yeah. how that looks. Yeah. Yeah, and then like compared to you know subdividing it, it was just adding resolution in that area. Yeah. So it's this is this is something I've this is a question I got a lot from when students when I'm teaching is what's the difference between just subdividing it and dynameshing it. So I've seen a lot of people who just use dynamesh mm. for um, for everything. Like you, it's like 10 million poly dynamesh version here, and that's overkill. Dynamesh is is not a replacement of subdivision. Dynamesh is a starting point. You know, you start off your, your general design and all that, and you need more resolution. Then you do, you control drag outside, and you get more resolution in that region. But once your general design is working, you're not going to dynamesh it again with higher resolution just to be able to add details to it. No. Then you will just hit control D just so you get more resolution on this, because now you can go up and down in in um, the resolutions. And um, this is just a lot better way of working. Yeah, sort of. If you if you're working on something for a let's say it's production or whatever, yeah, um, you would never have a final model that's dynameshed. No, you would always have a final model where you yourself have defined the topology. Yeah, um, dynamesh, however, is amazing, unbeatable for concepting. Yeah, it's so fast. For for all the models we showed in the beginning, they are all dynamesh. Yeah. Maybe they're dynamesh up to like five hundred thousand. And then uh, 500,000 points, and then maybe one one or two level of subdivision. But then the majority of the work there is done with Dynamesh. So when talking about Dynamesh, there's something we should uh, let's just undo all the subdivision levels. Control C. Actually, speaking of undo, we have a super nice feature up here. This is amazing. This is something you haven't really seen in any other software. You can just keep on going here and go back and forth. This this stores up to ten thousand undos. Yeah, currently we have one hundred and six or so. Yeah, uh, ten. I, I find that 
uh, it'll take me a few days probably yeah. to get up to 10,000. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you'll probably be fine. Yeah. So that's every single stroke. You can see now when we do this, every single stroke is being, it's being added to it. So, so that's, that, that's actually a good note on, um, when we, back to what we talked about in terms of saving as a project or a tool. Mm. If you save it as a tool, you will not get the undo history. Yeah. If you want to preserve it, you can save it as a project yeah. and you can choose whether or not to include the undo history or not. If you include your undo history, uh, the size becomes a lot bigger and it becomes yeah. more unstable, but it's also really cool because you can very easily backtrack and particularly if you want to do like time lapses or whatnot. Mm. But back to Dynamesh. So we, we don't have any submission levels now and uh, let's just Dynamesh this again now. And let's say we want to cut something away from this. We can do this using something called the trim brushes. If you hold on the shift and control button, you can see that the menu up here to top left changes. So control shift, and now you can see that we have the trim curve, trim lasso. We're just gonna use the trim rectangular for this. This is really useful. If you again hold on a shift and control, and you can now see that we're cutting away what's inside this rectangle. This is extremely handy because you can just, you don't have to smooth anything out. Let's say you want to cut, uh, you want to smooth away this guy here. Uh, but you, you, you can't really, it's really hard to do that. You can just cut it away. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to do anything fancy. So with all this said, uh, let's now move on to some actual sculpting. So the way we start this is, let's just use a sphere 3D and make poly mesh 3D. And this is already in edit mode now, which is pretty handy. So we just gonna go and rotate this, and then you can hold on a shift key just to snap this to a view. Yeah, if you hold down shift and F just to get up the poly frame again, you can sort of see you have the top of the pole, and then you just like yeah. that enables you to sort of visualize where to put it. <laughs> yeah. So if, you, if you're sculpting now, that's gonna be fine, but you need symmetry. Symmetry is amazing because now you can actually sculpt, you don't have to sculpt either side ind individually. Symmetry is brought up by hitting the X key or by going on a transform and just activating symmetry right here. So this is really useful. So now we can just start sculpting some general things here, just using the standard brush. So let's just do a super quick face here. This is not gonna be very pretty, but this is just gonna show my general workflow for this. There are many ways of doing this. This is just one way. Yeah, and this is gonna utilize all the basic tools that we've covered yeah. so far. Yeah. So I usually start by using the, the clay buildup, which is B, C, B. And I usually subdivide this a few times as well, just because I need some more resolution. That's control D. So you see now we get some, some texture in this. And whenever I'm sculpting anything like this, I just prefer to get some like, like the, these are the eyes here. I just prefer to get some, some general bone and landmarks down here. Some cheekbones and some, some skull and all that kind of stuff. like a Cthulhu skull now. Yes. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, like, and again, what we talked about with the clay buildup brush, the clay buildup brush is amazing for these kind of tasks because yeah. it's just so aggressive. It yeah. just it just cuts stuff away. We, if you're working with something like the standard brush for this, you're, you're often gonna end up with a very soft result just because it is a very soft brush by default. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. The clay buildup brush is amazing for this, especially with um, with the sort of square look that it has to it. Yeah. Uh, easy to define planes, easy to define volumes. So uh, we could definitely definitely recommend using that for most of your basic sculpting. Yeah. And what you're seeing now as well is I'm, I'm gonna keep going back and forth between sculpting out and sculpting in to define planes. So sculpting out and hold on the Alt key to sculpting in. Mm. So we're also just gonna change the matte cap. The matte cap is found here. And you see this is just a bunch of materials. I prefer the matte cap gray. Most of these are again, not particularly useful. No. So let's just switch to matte cap gray and it just looks a bit nicer. The, yeah. the default red one, I really don't like. And not just because of the color red, it's because that's a perfectly adequate color. <laughs> it's more because it, it just, the model isn't represented properly. No, I mean, you could make this matte cap gray, you could make that red. Yeah. Uh, you have some color options if you wanted to adjust that um, right underneath the matte cap. So yeah. if you wanted to play around with that, that's totally possible. Still a good color. Still a good color. <laughs> it, just, it just shows your model in a good way. Yeah. So when sculpting anything here, I prefer to yeah use pretty much only use the clay billet and use the move brush, B, M, V. This is to just to block in some general shapes here. 
And this is where, you know, we can get to a certain point if we're just using a, a, the Polymesh 3D sphere, you know, what we showed you before, you can get to a certain level with the existing yeah. topologies that, that's there when you subdivide. And then once you start getting into the more detail heavy stuff, um, pulling out, maybe you would pull out like some crazy ears or he has horns yeah. or something, then you would need to start going into Dynamesh territory because yeah. all of a sudden the, the topology just doesn't, it doesn't hold up anymore. Yeah, you can see here that right now it's getting very stretchy. So even if I subdivide this right now, it's going a bit crazy. And so that's what we talked about before, where if you then start to subdivide, yeah, you're subdividing the horn, but you're also subdividing everything else. Yeah, it gets very heavy very quickly. So let's dynamesh this guy, just by going under again, tool, geometry, and dynamesh, and hit no. And you can always play around with, let's say you were starting out, you were starting to block this out, but you felt that it was too detailed. You could always lower your resolution, re-dynamesh it again, mm. just to get to a lower level. Or if For you want sure. more, you know, up the resolution, re-dynamesh, get sure. more. So this is a very non-linear process. We're not going like, now we're done with subdivision or dynamism. No. We keep going back and forth all the time. Important thing when you're doing sculpting, not that we're gonna get too deep into the sculpting here, because this is a more technical ZBrush, but the important thing is don't go into details too early. Like, you know, just start defining stuff like where the eye sockets are before you're, you're adding, before you're actually adding the eyeballs or anything like that, or mm -hmm. like the eyelids. Because if you, if you don't have the socket, you can't place an eyelid. That's just the order of things. Yeah. So we can also change the feel of this brush. This brush currently is has a very harsh feel, like Morton mentioned. If we go under here, under brush alpha, under alphas here, we can now just change this either to off. This, uh, this just gives an incredibly soft feel right away. You can see the brush responds in a completely different manner. This is a bit too soft for me, and this is something I'll only use for like later stages of the model when I would need to like, it's like, like taking like turpentine or like just like smoothing down like a real clay model. So I prefer to keep this to alpha 06. This, this is like a mix between this and the super harsh one. It still gives you the texture, but it doesn't give you this incredibly harsh look. Yeah, and, and alphas are, are really a, a powerful thing in ZBrush. I think to some extent, uh, some people tend to overuse the alphas, especially yeah. in the beginning, you know, you're, you think you're having fun with the alphas, you just want to play around and that's totally cool. Yeah. It's like with the power comes great responsibility, <laughs> blah, blah, yes. blah. Um, but alphas have, you know, give you the opportunity to really add some amazing details to your model. Yeah. It's not just just for this where you just change the feel of the brush a little bit. You could add something like skin pores or uh, sippers. You could have you have like have a sipper texture in yeah. your alpha. It's it's really kind of limitless what you what you can do with it. Yeah, you can do crazy things with alphas. So I keep going 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 back and forth between the brushes here. B M V for the move brush. I just give him some ears. I guess now now is a good time. You can see now that you started pulling out ears. It's hard to get more resolution out of it. So if you yeah. hold down the control key and drag on your canvas, you can see that you'll start to add more resolution. Yeah. So now you can just you can just keep dragging more things out. So you, you're not really constrained to technical limitations, which you might be not a 3D software. You can just keep just adding and changing your design like crazy. So let's show the trim brushes again in a more practical point of view now. So let's say you want to remove this horn. It's incredibly tricky just to smooth this out or like to move this in. It can be really nasty sometimes. So what we can do, we can use uh, the trim brushes. So if you hold on control and shift again, we know you now have the trim brush enabled here. If you don't have this, just find it up here. So we're just gonna use the trim rect and now you can just cut it out. And you're gonna see that gone, <laughs> instantly gone. We have a little problem though. A little problem. It's as not you can working see, with symmetry. It's not working with symmetry. And this is this is kind of annoying in ZBrush. So there are either one or two buttons you have to hit for this, <laughs> depending. So the first button, maybe the only one, is under geometry. Again, most things are under geometry and modify topology. And this is a long and scary list. Uh, we want mirror and weld. But now you can see that does the wrong thing. It brought a horn back. So this works. This this works from, it mirrors from the left to the right. So you would assume now, say from left to right, that wait, why does it add the horn from right to left? That's because we are now actually sculpting this the wrong way. We're actually sculpting on the back side. Yeah. 
Um, and, and that's something you, it's which is kind of hard to know when you're sculpting seabrush and just having fun with this. It's you can like if you were to you know you could activate perspective and the floor mode yeah. to maybe give you a better idea Doing of where things are. So you can see we are. It's also upside down. We're upside down with the wrong way round, right? So it's it's it doesn't it doesn't really matter for our concept sculpts. No. You can always correct these things, but those two buttons can sort of help you you know get a feel for where where is your model. Yeah. So if it does this and <laughs> and it's bringing you back instead of just kind of like kind of cutting away on the other side as well. We're just going to go under under tool deformation and now we're going to go up here and hit mirror. Mirror just does exactly that. It mirrors the model. And then we can again go under geometry and mirror and weld. And ta-da. There we go. This is just something you have to play around with and get used to. Yeah. I think th there are a lot of things you have to get used to when it comes to ZBrush and yeah. that's just yeah, one of the two. things. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are some things. So it's super useful that you can just cut stuff away. It just becomes, it just means that you can be creative and not be attached to your decisions because it's you're not going to run into, oh, it's too hard to change. You can just blitz stuff away. Mm. Anything, just get rid of it. <laughs> Perfect now. Thank you like so the, much. the symmetry options are you can you you have some really powerful tools within symmetry. There's also a symmetry option called radial symmetry. Mm. Radial symmetry allows you to define define a certain number of points. To, Let's look at this. to actually, you know, so X would be the standard symmetry where you just have two points around a model. If you activate radial symmetry, you could define something like eight, 16 points. So what Morgan's talking about here is currently we have a regular symmetry, which is, which is you know, basic stuff. Yeah. But now we have the cool symmetry. <laughs> the cool symmetry. It's like, it's, radial symmetry is not something I use a lot, but it's just fun to play around with. Yeah, exactly. This actually brings up a good point as well. So you find this under under transform and you find it under here, but it's a bit annoying having, if you, let's say you were to use this a lot, it's a bit annoying having to go under here all the time. Mm. What we can do, we can dock this over. So if you, ha you see this little button here, you can just drag this over here to the right and now it's here. So now if you just scroll here, you can just go between tool and transform. So you see this little guy here called R. And now this this is where it gets funky. Oh yeah. Radial symmetry. And you right. can define which axis. Right now it's on the X axis. Yeah. You can do Y, Z, you can do all of them at once. It'd be crazy. Um, but I mean, I don't, it's a fun tool to play around with and you could make some really interesting things. Oh, that actually kind of looks like my first 3D model <laughs> ever. So again, great powers, great responsibility. But <laughs> yeah, you can do some thing. really, really funky things with this. Like, like we said, this is not something we use a whole lot, mm -mm. but it's really cool once you do need it. Yeah, it does. It does come in handy. Yeah. So let's just sculpt a little bit more on this guy here now. Again, just with symmetry, hitting the X key, disable all the other stuff here. And you can see now that we're getting into a more, a little more refined state. Yeah. That the softer clay builder brush is really nice because it doesn't leave us with, now I'm going to call them like nasty artifacts yeah. instead of useful things <laughs> from the brush. You know, you don't get the coarse look of, yeah. of the previous alpha. Um, something that I also like to do is usually I, I, I actually just switch between the, the square alpha and no alpha. Mm. Um, that helps me a lot as well. So it, it's just it's just whatever preference you really have. Um, yeah. It's really great for soft, super soft skin details, yeah. getting some puffiness in the eyes. and You can also just say, uh, take the intensity down now. Like in the beginning, uh, this is not something I've touched. But let's say, let's subdivide this model now so you have some more resolution here. Uh, if you want just, this can be a bit harsh. If you just want to blend some shapes together, you can set this to something like five. Mm. And you can just work the shapes up. It might be a bit hard to see in the video here, but it's it's just blending everything a bit nicely together. Uh, this is this is particularly uh, useful when you're using something like you're dragging out alphas. Like we talked about before with the skin pores, right? If you were to drag out an alpha like that, it, it comes out at a certain intensity. Mm. Um, because you don't really have control over the brush pressure as much. So yeah. adjusting the Z intensity there could really help you. Yeah. And let's add some eyes to this guy as well, some actual eyeballs. And this brings us to the topic of sub tools. So if you go again under tool, because that's where all the magic happens, <laughs> and you have sub tools. Here you can see a list of all your sub tools. And as we have none, we only have one guy here. There's nothing here, yeah. so <laughs> which makes sense. So the way we can add subtools to this is we can go under append, and now we can we can select the sphere three D, and you can see this automatically created a poly mesh 
3D of this. Yeah, you, can, you can't have the initial weird ZBrush yeah. primitives with an, a, an actual 3D model, so it'll just do all the work for you. Yeah. So this is handy because you know you can you can hide stuff here. You can. Uh, and you can just manage your your scene here. This is something you will have a lot of subtools after a while. Yeah, and this is where we get into the differences between. So what we've been doing so far in the viewport, which is navigating around, that's been sort of translating a camera mm. around. You know, scaling or moving the camera closer and then panning or whatever. Now we're actually getting into the territory of actually manipulating 3D objects yes. because obviously the eyeball is uh, malplaced. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So, so the way what we want to do now, we want to place the eyeball inside his little eye. Hmm. So currently we are on uh, on the main head here now. You can just switch here, but the, my my preferred way of switching between subtools is by holding down the Alt key and just clicking on them. This is super handy because you might have like a hundred subtools here eventually. So just Alt clicking, and that brings us to it. So this also brings us to how do you actually move, scale, and rotate your subtools? Because you don't want to do this move with the move brush, because that just gonna you're just gonna screw that up like crazy. Yeah, because that actually deforms your your mesh. Yeah. So we you can see up here we have move, scale, and rotate, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So now now we're looking into something different, right? Now you can see this clearly different than than what we've yeah. been doing so far. So you can um, you can just move this around by holding that by going to the handles here. And if you hold in the center one, you can scale it down a little bit. This is kind of like a universal manipulator here. So yeah, and again, again, if you hold down shift while you're rotating around your model, you sort of snap to, yes. to degrees like 90 degree views. Very, very useful. So just move this into place. You can also rotate this. This is a bit hard to see with this guy because <laughs> he's perfectly spherical. But you can see the wireframe here now. Again, Shift F to get wireframe. You can see that we now we're now rotating this, and you can see the degree on the bottom as well. If you hold on a Shift key, it snaps to uh, every what is it? Every ten degrees, fifteen degrees, 15, something five like degrees, that. something like that. It snaps at a, <laughs> it snaps that snaps at an even degrees. So now we can just move this into place. And remember before we used the mirror and weld tool? We can do the same thing now to bring this guy over to the other side. So geometry. And now we can go to modify topology and mirror and weld. Two eyes. Two eyes. And now they're, they're going to be the same sub tool. So once you move you know, one eye, you'll move both eyes. Yeah. So you can now rename this under here, this one. And you can just rename this two eyes. I highly recommend actually renaming your stuff. Yeah. Because this gets messy fairly quickly. So if you want to sculpt on this now, you have to enable symmetry again now. Symmetry is always subtool based. So you see so now sym symmetry is on. If you go in this guy, symmetry is we can disable symmetry, and now symmetry will be enabled again. So this is this is a bit annoying because uh, sometimes you forget to enable or disable symmetry. Yeah, that's uh that's a pain. Yeah, that is a pain. <laughs> so now we can just start sculpting in. This is kind of what they were doing, like uh, like with the old Bernini sculpts and all that. They would actually like make sculpt in the eye eyeballs here sculpting it's, the pupils uh, incredibly efficient yes <laughs> it works so it works a little highlight here we can also we can also just uh, subdivide this and now you can see a difference between the total points and the active points here yeah and if you wanted to now that we have more multiple sub tools you can let's say you have a bunch of them 100 now mm -hmm. you can actually work with one sub tool visible at a time if yes. you just uh, if you just solo it or if you isolate it Super, super nice feature. If your scene gets super heavy, yeah. you don't want to display everything at once. This is something you're going to use a lot. Yeah. Which also brings us to visibility. So let's say, like, right now we can solo this guy here, but that that just hides the other subtools. What if you only want to focus on the ears for now? We can um, we have visibility tools here, which is pretty damn useful. So if you hold on the shift and uh, a control shift button, this is how we got to the rectangle tools before. Oh, sorry, the, the, trim the, trim tool. the trim tools before, trim rectangle. We also have some guys here called the selection tools. So these are the default tools that were selected yes. before. So by default, if you just click on this one, this, this, this is what's going to be there by default. If you hold down Control and Shift now, and you drag, you see you get this green, green rectangle. And if you release now, everything which is inside this will be the only thing visible, which is awesome because now you can really go in and you can just focus your your efforts on one area without it being cluttered. Hmm. 
really useful stuff. The way you get everything back now is by holding down Control, Shift, and just clicking. If you undo this, we can also just hold down Control, Shift, and dragging outside to inverse it. So again, just Control, Shift, click to get this back. A cool feature of this is like this works like a brush. So if you hold down Alt at the same time, you actually get a subtraction. Yes. Um, and you hide whatever is in the, inside the rectangle. Exactly. So if you want to just hide the ears and focus on everything, you can just do that. We also have, uh, instead of just a rectangle, we can also use a la lasso. So exact same hotkeys as before. Like I can't speak for anyone else, but this I hardly ever use the rectangle one actually. Yeah. It's mostly just the lasso tool yeah, for me. Same here. So this is useful. This is something specific case. You want to only focus on a face. Because if you look at the entire model, you know, sometimes you just get overwhelmed by details, mm. particularly like now we're around 400, 500,000. If, if this gets up to like 10 million polys, you're just going to get a bit overwhelmed. So really useful. We can now just go in here and um, we can now just sculpt this up specific regions here. And you can have, if you, let's say you sculpted everything in one go, you had the body, the head, everything as one. Mm. Um, where the isolation or the selection tools can really come in handy is if you want to split parts of your model. Mm. You can actually split parts, so you then you create more sub tools in a way, yeah. just to lighten the load. Or so these are some nice little hotkeys for you. So if you if you um, hold on the Shift F key, you or polyframe, you can see we have different colors here. When whenever you, we trim something away here, you can see that we get a different poly group. So if you let's just change this back to our rectangle. If you hold Control, Shift, and click on this now, you see you get isolation here. You can isolate each specific group. And what Morton is talking about is you can now split these into separate into separate subtools. In this case, we don't want that, because this is just an automatic <laughs> created one. So that would be terrible. Pretty terrible. <laughs> Pretty terrible. But um, let's say we want, to, we want to split off the ears at this point. Because why not? Yeah, why not? Maybe he's got detachable ears. Yeah, he has, he's, he has detachable ears. <laughs> <laughs> so what we can do now is we can go into, again, polyframe, and we can hit the Control W key. Control W, Q, uh, Control w will just mask everything which is currently visible. Yeah, so it creates, it creates a polygroup for everything yes. that you see. So what we can do now, we can go into, we can do this. And we can just refine it, like like Morton said before. We don't really use the we don't really use the um, the, the the rectangular. We use, mostly use the um, the lasso one. Yeah, it's a little harder to select with the rectangular. But one, it's right? fine for now. So let's say we want to split this guy off here. We can now hit Control W again, and now you can see it gets a slightly different color. And um, now we can split this off. So if you want to split this off now, you go under again tool. And sub tool, and now we have we have tons of options here. I, I really recommend you going through these and just learn what they are. But the one we want now is split, and we have group split. Group sl split will just it will first will tell you, hey, you can't undo this. This is something which happens in ZBrush. <laughs> Again, <They're> <laughs> that's another thing you have to get used to. It's a bit weird. So we can now just hit OK, and now you see we have a separate sub tool here, and we can now call this these ears. So if you isolate this now, you can see this is a completely separate subtool. And there might be different use. I mean, in this case, it's pretty silly. But there, there are different use cases for, for isolating and, and splitting Absolutely. things. Absolutely. So let's look into masking next. You can see that now we, I actually can't undo this. Like If I want to get back to ears now, I can't do that. Because undos are based on, uh, on per subtool. So th there is no way to really bring this back now. Um, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. So let's do some masking now. Masking is incredibly handy. It's a bit like putting like tape on something. If you like with masking tape and you want to paint across it, it just means you can't touch the area which is currently masked. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to, let's say you don't, you want to only focus on, uh, or you don't want to focus on the mouth here. You can mask out the mouth by holding a control key and dragging super useful. So whatever is gray now is not going to be affected by any kind of sculpting. This is one of these core tools that is like, so what is the use case for this? Well, everything. Yeah, it's once you it's like, you'll know, once yeah. you need it, yeah. it's, it's hard to explain. It's just incredibly useful. So uh, to clear the mask, control drag outside a model, 
as you might have picked up now, this is also the same key as <laughs> as dynamishing it. <laughs> so if there is a mask and you control drag outside, it will clear the mask. If there is no mask it control, and you do the exact same thing, it will dynamish your model. Yeah, and so, with, and like with all other brushes, it you can subtract from yes. from your from your masking as well. So now you paint it out with everything regular, then you hold down Alt, Control, and Alt at the same time, and then you start subtracting from your mask. You can actually see there is a little plus and minus here, which happens now. It's pretty handy. Mm. So let's say we we just want to affect like the the the, the bottom lip here. Now we don't want the top one to be affected. We can just paint a little mask for the top one, and. Uh, this might take a bit of time getting used to. Yeah. And now we can just use the, the move brush B M V, and we can just sculpt this in. We can just move this in now. You can see it's a bit harsh, and that's because the, mar the mask is just a harsh mask, so it's painted with a harsh brush. Let's just add a bit more masking up here, just so we don't affect that. If you want to soften the mask off, you can just hit the control key, and just you can see how everything is now being softened off here. So now if you want to move this out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, control key and tap on your model. Yeah, control key and tap on your model. So masking is incredibly useful. It's, yeah, you really shouldn't underestimate how useful masking can be. Yeah. Uh, repositioning limbs or you yeah. just have separate parts of the model that you want to isolate. It's it's super handy. And also, again, if you hold on control key now, control, control W key, uh, whatever is masked will now get a separate polygroup. Mm. This is the same thing we did before. It was just that everything visible. So if you want to make a mask for something, you can just very. Or you want to make a polygroup for something, you can just very quickly just paint a mask for it. Control W. And now you have a weird cheekbone mask. Now you have weird, weird cheekbone mask, <laughs> which might or might not be useful. Yeah. If you want to clear all the polygroups now, hit the Control W key, and we just get back to to the way it was before. Uh, for masking as well, we also have a little menu for it. So let's just make a little mask. And this is again under a tool, like most things are. You really don't have to go much outside a tool menu. And we have a little guy here, which is masking right there. So you can do view mask. It's still going to be there. And you can inverse it and all that. Essentially, everything we just talked about in terms of hotkeys, you just have a couple of more advanced features here. And to in inverse your mask, you can just uh, also control and tap on your canvas. And that sort of inverses your mask. Yeah. So it's control tap on your canvas to inverse your mask, but control tap on your canvas to clear your selection. So you have to get your mind around these yeah. things depending on which tool you actually yeah, exactly. use. Exactly. So this is this is a bit confusing, but all all the things here are masking is all right here. And if you go under right underneath masking, you actually have visibility as well, which is the selection one we were talking mm. about before. Yeah. And you can manipulate it from in here if you're uncomfortable with the uh, with the hotkeys, for yeah. example. You can also do cool stuff like growing your selection and all that. Hmm. So there are definitely a lot of cool things you can do that yeah. under visibility. So I definitely recommend just going through some of these guys. Let's cover quickly layers. Layers are essentially like Photoshop layers in the way yeah. that you can just you can you can sculpt something on a layer and you can you can remove it and change the intensity of it afterwards. It's like having a it's like a strange undo in CBrush, yeah. where it's like you have it's confined to a layer. Let's say you were making changes, someone requested make the nose bigger, smaller, yeah. eyes, whatever. You do that on a layer, and you always have the option to just take away that one change. Yeah. So that's again under tool and layers up right here. Let not to be confused with up here. <laughs> the this other is layers. again weird. We're not even going to talk about it. Like the two and a half D nastiness, which is back <laughs> for like legacy from the mid nineties, whatever yeah, series exactly. was made. It's terrible stuff. So layers under tool, and we have this one, the big button, the only button you have. <laughs> <laughs> so we can now just pretty simple. Pretty simple. So we can now just do a change on this, and. Um, now, if all the change I just did now, this is stored in a layer. So you can see we have a, a record button here. This means that this is now active. If you if you now ch hit a record button and then you can change the little eye here, you can just turn it on and off. If you want to go back into the layer to change it, you have to enable record again. Layers are a bit confusing, but essentially record, yeah, on and off and then record. Just make sure that you are in record mode. And you also have a sort of opacity for the layer, yeah. which is just the slider. So like in Photoshop exactly. So you just maybe you want to tone it down a little bit or you want to tone it up a little tone bit. it up. That's what happens at <laughs> fifty. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well okay, there's a limit to it. <laughs> 
Excellent. So really useful stuff. In uh, I know this is more of an artistic tutorial in terms of like for artists, but in production we have to use layers. If you if you don't use if you don't use layers, you're so screwed because, like Morton said, the note might be make the head smaller or bigger or whatnot. And if you do that without layers, mm -hmm. they will yell at you and write you angry emails. As they should. As they, as they should, <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> I mean, one thing to keep in mind is that layers will make your scene file bigger. Yeah, but absolutely. But that is a necessary sacrifice. Necessary sacrifice. You can also do this and call it you can just whatever name, whatever. And then we can just hit um, delete to remove the layer. Next up, let's look at C spheres. So the way we did this guy here is we just start with uh, essentially a ball of clay and we just extruded it out using uh, using DynaMesh. Yeah. There is a separate way which is super cool, which, which is called C spheres. It's a little more old school. Yeah, it's a bit more <laughs> old school, but it also has a lot of uses as well. Definitely. So C sphere is found again on a tool and a nice friendly red one here. So it's kind of like it's kind of like the primitives. ZBrush primitives, yeah. you, can, you can't mix a C-sphere with anything no. uh, until you make it a, a real a real boy, <laughs> yeah. a real 3D <laughs> object. <laughs> so the very first thing we're going to do here is, again, enable symmetry. And now you can see that symmetry is enabled. Just by hitting X. Just by hitting the X key. And now this gets funky. Mm. So this can be used to, I prefer to use this to create like a basic maquette for like characters. If I'm just using a head, I most likely will not use C-spheres. But let's just quickly show you now how you can just make a super quick body of some sorts. So this is where these change. Yeah. Th this gets weird. <laughs> so if draw is enabled, you can draw out some things. And the size of the depends just on, on just how much you're dragging out here. But if you want to move this out, you, now you have to use move. And this is different from the regular <laughs> move. Yeah, it's it's very bizarre. But you just kind of have to get used to it. Yeah, one of these things. <laughs> so we can now just keep dragging this out. You can also add, uh, add um, a C-sphere in the middle of a chain here. So you now see, if you just click here, we get, we get one of these. And like with anything else, you can invert it, hold down Alt, take away the thing. Yeah. So if you want to remove this, hit the, the Alt key and click it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say this is a knee now. We can now just um, we just added a knee to it. We the, can use the move, and we can just move this into place. And these these also work with hotkeys like the move, scale, mm -hmm. and rotate. W, E, and R. And the way I prefer to do this, if I want to add a limb, is not to drag this and then uh, and then use the move. I just prefer to add it to the last one here and then use, use the W key to get to move, and then just move this out. You can see now that this is moving our entire thing, because this is all these two. This is because this works with the radius of the brush. So if you want to make sure this only affects the single C-sphere you selected, just set the draw size all the way down to one, and it was only going to affect one of them. The reason I don't prefer to drag it out is because most of the time when doing this, I want it to be the same size as the last one. Mm -hmm. So we can just add a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of a body to it. <laughs> again, with, as with sculpting, general to specific. And again, you're just using the hotkeys Q is for draw. You can just hover over these as well. Some little arms here. It's kind of like, um, oh, OK, now no, it looks like a person. Before, <laughs> it's like almost like a weird Christmas tree. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm good at. I think C spheres is one of those things that nowadays might be overlooked a little bit. Like yeah. C spheres back in the day was all we had. That was uh, the bomb. <laughs> that was the bomb. <laughs> um, I still think it's a very relevant and a very powerful tool to yeah. quickly you know, um, sketch out yeah. your, your, your model. Absolutely. Um, and a cool thing about it is like if you if you press the A key, you can preview a mesh of how it'll look. Yeah. Um, this is not the actual mesh. This is a preview of how the actual yes. mesh will look like. So don't sculpt on this. Yeah, don't sculpt on that. <laughs> so uh, in order to actually get this turn this into polygons, you just again just hit make poly mesh 3D. You also have more settings here all the way at the bottom. You can see these are now a bit different now. Now we have a C sketch rigging and adaptive skin unified skin. Uh, adaptive skin, this is what happens when we hit the A key. Mm -hmm. We can now change the density to this. So lower density, higher density. And you can just change this up. I honestly stick with default settings most of the time. Get it into poly mesh and start working on yeah. it. 
this is this is an incredible tool though because you can so quickly change the look of it. If you use a scale one and you go between the change, you see between the chains here, you can see you, this turns green now, and now you can just scale stuff up and down. It's like you're scaling everything in the hierarchy. Yeah, really useful. You also scale each individual one. So if you if you want to just scale one of them, you can just do that by by hitting that specific one. But now we can just scale this <laughs> up and down. So. There you go. Nice. Great proportions. Mm, thank you. So again, hit the A key. Maybe take density down a little bit to two. And now we can just hit make poly mesh 3D. And now we have this guy here. So now if you hit the A key here, nothing happens because this has now been converted to polygons. So the way I prefer to work with this is I use just a move brush for this and just move this kind of stuff out here. You can also smooth this out and um, just get some general portions. I mean, this looks like absolute crap at the moment, <laughs> <laughs> but this is often how I'll start yeah. with my like proper sculpts here. The cool thing about this is like here's a, here's the power of something like masking or polygroups, like we talked about before. Like I say, you wanted to translate just mm. the limbs. The nice thing about um, C spheres is that they have like built-in built-in polygroups. So yeah. each sphere or each length of joint in the sphere becomes its own polygroup. So it makes it really easy for isolation. So if you want to isolate your arms now, you can just hold shit shift F or hit the polyframe up here and control shift click on it. And now you can see we get different this actually looks like one because ah, the so color close. is so similar. <laughs> uh, but there are different things. So if you want to only hide, hide, uh, isolate one of these, control shift click to click on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we've isolated it. Control shift drag outside to invert and control shift click outside this is a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> to um to get it back now, and this is this is honestly how I'll start if I'm doing if I'm doing something like this where I don't have a base mesh. You know, we just start off like this, starting and getting some some super hacky bony landmarks here, getting in a bit of a rib cage, getting in a bit of like pelvis here. But this is this is how I'll straight up just start sculpting. Super six pack because this guy is <laughs> mega strong. <laughs> but you know he skipped uh, leg day. He definitely skipped leg day. Don't do that. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a very efficient way of working. It's really good for concepting. Yeah. You know you can really just bust out a lot of these sculpts in a day. Yeah. Okay, so with all these tools here covered, such as how to make something in Dynamesh, C spheres, the various brushes like the Clay Builder brush, you really have all the tools you need to get started in ZBrush just to create some sculpts like this. But what you might not know how to do is how to actually how to actually sculpt, like the theory behind sculpting and mm. some and just some general in-depth ZBrush knowledge. So uh, we don't just do free tutorials here on YouTube. We also have a whole separate website uh, on Flip Normals where we have a lot of more elaborate courses, should you be interested in that. Yeah, it's probably a little outside the scope of this tutorial, but we have something like our Creature Kit where you can easily add details to everything you have in ZBrush. Mm. We have actually, we have an introductory course, a more in-depth introductory course on ZBrush as well. Yeah. Um, our lighting scene is also super handy for if you want to light your final model. There's a lot of good material on here if you want to, you know, take your sculpts or your 3D models to the next level, really. So we have a lot of these. Let's cover some of these. So this one is, is a creature kit. This is essentially, you can make a lot of this stuff very quickly. Like this is, we, we made all the beginning, all the sculpts in the beginning using this kit here. So we have tons of like armor plates, anatomy, abstract, eyes, and so on. So if you want to very quickly just concept something up, like all these guys here are just like dragged out using this creature kit. We also have a way more elaborate introduction to ZBrush. This is like three hours long and this covers all the topics we just covered now and more, just way more in depth. Then we have the complete motor to ZBrush workflow. This covers essentially how to work with ZBrush in a pipeline. Like we said here, ZBrush is weird and <laughs> it's incredibly hard to actually work with ZBrush. This covers how to use it with Modo specifically, but we um, how to use how to make this image here. But this is this is applicable. The principles are applicable for any render engine or any any kind of 3D software. Steps are the same. And then we have uh, concepting with Marvelous Designer and ZBrush. This is uh, how to do super sexy clothing yeah, it's with like Marvelous Designer. 
focused on like how to do a character with clothing in yeah. Marvelous Designer, and then again pipeliney where you go back and forth between Marvelous and ZBrush. So with all of that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a bit of a longer one. Um, if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.